Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Mower Mysteries. Nope, my name's not Zoto. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's mystery, it's not another episode. It just sounded good. This mystery, however, is on a Toro 22-inch recycler. This is the one with the uh, Briggs & Stratton 7.25 Never Add Oil. I don't believe that, by the way. I think you should always change your oil. But point being is, uh, I've serviced this mower for years and years. The lady who uh, has it said it wouldn't start this year. She had let someone borrow it. When I went to see her, uh, I did turn the mower over uh, on the oil side to check the uh, condition of the blade. And when I turned it back over again, there was a whole lot of gasoline on the deck that had come from the carburetor side. So it seemed kind of weird because the carburetor was up in the air. It should not have uh, leaked out there. Uh, and the curious thing is when I got it back home uh, to start working on it, uh, I was able to get it to start. It didn't really want to stay running good, but uh, that led me to believe that perhaps it could be a fuel issue. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it could have been a valve issue. Never had the valves adjusted in its life. But let's jump into this. I'll show you what I found. I did discover that the oil was overfilled. This, you know, is a problem of overfilling oil, I find, with a lot of mowers. Now, the air filter is mighty clogged up, but that alone uh, won't cause a no-start condition. The tank appears to have uh, fresh fuel in it, and I know it's hard to see. There doesn't appear to be any debris in there, but... Uh, I'll be draining out what's in the carb bowl to see if there's any water in there. So I want to uh, drain the carb bowl, and to assist with that, there's two 8mm uh, screws right here that I'm going to remove. These two are 7mm. Grab the carb box off of there. And then I'll be able to uh, very easily wiggle the carb off of here. She said. There we go. Had to pop it out of that corner right there. We're going to pop off the top of the choke plate right there. It's all kind of tough with the fuel line attached. There we go. I'm going to clamp off the fuel line with some little vice grip pliers. And these uh, carburetors have a um, drain plug on here, 10 millimeter socket, which I'm going to use with a 10 millimeter wrench. All right, there is some crud coming out. So as you can see, there is just a small amount of water in here. That's that little bubble running across. I think all the debris came out uh, from the exterior of the carburetor, but my theory at this point is that when the mower was on its side and it leaked some fuel out of the overflow, it might have gotten rid of all the water. So I'll drain a little more bit of the fuel out of the tank, and uh, hopefully this fixes the problem. So there was some... Uh, jello in the bottom of this carburetor so I'll be uh, actually pulling this thing apart so to pull the carb off I'm gonna pull that hose clamp out of the way get the hose off I'll be draining the balance of the fuel out of the tank and at this point turn the carburetor 90 degrees and get it out of that L-shaped bracket right there. There is a little bit of jello-y stuff you can see in there. Use the same uh, seven millimeter to take out these. And a um, flat blade screwdriver just to gently pry up at the corners. There's a big O-ring in there. I don't want to damage. There we go. Pop it open. There's the O-ring. And 
the honest truth is this doesn't look that bad. Pull this pin, it snaps in, it does not go through a hole, a hinge. The needle is a rubber tipped needle and I don't see any indentations on it. It looks in good shape. Next I'm just going to lever out the fuel stack here. Try not to damage the o-ring there. I don't see any debris in here. Gonna pull this apart. Oh, it did not want to come apart. Hit that with a little carb spray, and I think this will be good to go. I try to minimize the amount of carb spray on these parts. It's pretty bad on the rubber o-rings just a light spray inside not a lot And the biggest problem I see with these, and it's hard to tell inside of here, there is a little ring inside of here that tends to get rotated out of place. And that has to be in the right position for the top of this emulsion tube to stick up inside of the carb. You want to make sure when we put this back together we'll see that. I'm going to use a touch of uh, WD-40 to lubricate all these bits and parts going back together. Um, this goes on like this. Make sure that it gets all the way home. There should be no gap right there. This O-ring here goes inside of here opposite of the fuel intake. This is the choke side. Snap that in firmly on both sides. You'll hear it snap in. The float and the needle look in good shape. Drop the needle in to the float carefully there. And remember this particular pin just snaps in to the carb. There is not a matching holes in the hinge. Make sure you hear that snap in on both sides right there and there then before we go any further we want to look inside this might be kinda of hard to see but you can barely see inside of there the emulsion tube there it is sticking up inside of there and you that's what you want to see next there's this depression inside the carb bowl that needs to align on top of the fuel stack right there not like this it won't work properly it needs to go on like that actually I'm gonna lube this o-ring up with a little bit of WD-40 that should make that go on much happier And again, seven millimeter. Tighten this little guy down. You can strip these out, don't use a power tool. Just 
snug. Clean up the inside lip. We've got all the jello cleared out of there. Here is that 10 millimeter. If I had a ratchet, I would put that on. But this is a one of these quarter turn guys. That's it. That's all you need. All right, this carb is ready to go back on. Make sure that gasket doesn't get lost. I'm draining out the balance of the fuel in the tank just to make sure there's no water debris in there. And I'll um, blow out the excess before I put the carb back on with shop air. There we go. Almost done. On this carburetor, there is an O-ring that you need to inspect that goes back inside the carb and then there's this white locking ring that should snap into the back of the carb that should be flush first thing is the throttle plate spin the carb 90 then on that bend, next is the choke return. This one's kind of tough to do. You have to go almost 90 in the other direction. If this shroud was off of here, it would be a whole lot easier. It goes in that hole right there. There. Get the breather tube from the engine out of the way. This tab right here has to line up in that slot. And the entire thing, you just wiggle it very carefully back onto the intake. That's clear. The throttle plate is clear. Reattach the fuel line. The hose clamp. Going to add some fresh fuel and make sure there's no leaks. And check for leaks. Clean the outside of the air box. New air filter. You cannot clean these um, paper ones. See how nice, bright, and white that is in comparison to the old one. This uh, new air filter is um, Briggs & Stratton part number 593-2. Or the Stens part number is 102851. Make sure you hit the hinges on the bottom side right here and snap it closed. And that breather tube for the fuel tank should be behind there. The key switch is broke off. She didn't want to fix it, so we're going to do the next best thing and give this a whirl.
so I'm pretty convinced that the problem with this was uh, uh, just a little bit of water in the gasoline. Uh, and I believe when I turned it over for whatever reason, what water was the excess water that was in there drained out because not a lot came out when I drained uh, the fuel tank. Uh, I did up the RPMs uh, because uh, I think it 2600 whatever it was uh, for a 22 inch mower is too low so I up that uh, you have to go sort of underneath the fuel tank for that it's kind of fiddly to get to and it is easier with the top off uh, and you basically bend the bracket uh, where the governor arm return spring is and the more tension on the spring the faster the RPM so I got it up to just over 3000 RPM which I think is a good place for this mower to be. I hope you gained something from this. I hope you learned something from it. Um, most of my problems are uh, fuel-related problems and ethanol, uh, and maybe you have those problems as well. Uh, if this video uh, helped you at all, I, I hope you learned something from it. Please return the favor to me and push the like and subscribe button, and this will help me make more of these videos. Well, remember, I'm the lawnmower lady. And as I'm fond of saying, mo happy. Thanks for watching. Are you still here? Well, there's more to this mystery anyway. I got a text the next morning from her that said, Susie here got half the yard mode and the engine started skipping and then stopped. Giving it a few minutes to cool down, I will try again. Any suggestions? And I responded, well, when you mean skipping, do you mean like faltering or surging? She came back with surging. We went over a couple of things that it could have been bad fuel cap, bad ignition coil, even some crud left over in the carburetor. She says she'll wait a while. And I thought, whoa, maybe she hit something. And I asked, I said, did you maybe hit something? She goes, I don't think so. I said, well, just in case, let it cool down, but be sure and check your oil. She goes, will do told her I'm happy to come back and take a look at it for her. Big thumbs up from her. Then I get from her, oh sh**, sorry, it's out of gas. And I said, I'll have to start calling you Carl. She says, Carl, question mark? Turns out it's one of her favorite movies. Who knew?